Jalal Eddin, Episode 8. Go! Go on, boy! They're here! They're here! They got here safely! Hello. Welcome! Hello welcome, there. everyone! Welcome! Welcome! Welcome, welcome, welcome! Please, please, welcome, please, welcome! Please, welcome, welcome! Welcome, welcome, welcome! welcome. It's nice to have you, very nice to have you. We will you. have to spend the night in Deja Vu. The caravan will be on its way at dawn. Because of two reasons, O oh Great Sheikh. One was the Sultan's incompetence, and the other was the Mongols' relentless attack. So because of that, we will be going to the Hajj pilgrimage. As a matter of fact, we have heard that the Mongols have actually raised Samarkand and Bukhara to the ground, and now they are even marching towards Balkh right now. I think that it was the right thing to do to leave Balkh. Either way. I think that the Mongols will come to Meshabu too, without a doubt. With everything that is happening at the moment, it's best if you come along with us too. We all know that Bahavala did not run away from Bal. It was all the ungrateful ones who forced him to leave. What should Atta run away from? At this old age, I'm vulnerable and very weak. So why should I run away? With all the friends I haven't seen for so long who come along from every corner of the world. Atta knows nothing else but Nishabo. I just can't go anywhere. Sadly, mankind is now faced with death. Always. And constantly. Now all that is left is the excitement of the Hush. And you are going to be attending it. I will only long for it in my heart. Oh God. My soul burnt in this astonishment. In fact, I have already burnt from head to toe in desire. You actually said that in the conference of the birds. Hello. Hello there. What mankind wants is something that he yearns for something which cannot ever be found. And then, day and night, he looks for it. He looks for it until he has found what he intended to, until he has found what he had yearned for. He just won't stop until he finds it. This is strange. This kind of wanting, one does not even make sense of it. And for mankind, it is almost impossible to comprehend it. Because what he yearns for is something that is new and fresh, something which hasn't been discovered. But no matter how long the journey is, what he had yearned for and found, that is what true desire is. When the old 
Almighty God wants to create. It is very different and also strange. Some of it is out of the ordinary. It's quite simple, yet it's the most beautiful things you will ever see. Wonderful things, like gardens and flower beds, planes and sciences, and even music. He assigns his wishes and desires within mankind, so with those desires, these creations come to be. So you see, whatever you see in this world, you can be very sure that the world exists in them. Aladdin, come down right now. Your father's waiting for Is you. Is father back already? No, he's not here. You'll have to go to him to Sheikh Attar's house. Your father has sent for you, so please come down now. Sheikh Attar's house? That's great. Let's go. Careful, careful. Where are your shoes? And where is your dolman? Um, when I was on top of the tree. Someone had taken them. Come with me. the poor animal for so long. It's a pity. It's an Arabian horse, so riding it is easy and it's expensive too. It shows you know your horses. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Just take the animal over there. You want me to tell him to take care of it? <laughs> please, please. <laughs> That's it, right there. Isn't this Roman the son of Saul's horse? No, it's not. Yes, it is. I'm sure of it. No! This is Bahaeddin Balad's horse. He is the Sultan of Scholars. And it seems that he is quite a great man. Before the caravan even arrived here, Attar actually sent people here so that they can escort him to his house. Tell me, which room is he staying in? Who are you actually looking for? You want Rahman the son of Saul? Or do you want the Sultan of Scholars? Neither of them. I want some good grilled meat worth two coins. <laughs> I will make it happen for you. 
I'll make it happen right away. <laughs> I want the food delivered to my room tonight. Of course. You delight businessmen, I must say. You're an extraordinary man. <laughs> I will make sure to change your room for you. Don't you worry. You can even stay in the room next to Baha Balad's. I'll get you a very nice room. The one with a jar next to it. I'm sure it's a very nice room. Isn't it? Where's the man in charge of the caravan? The man in charge? He's over there. He's on the roof having something to eat at the moment. <laughs> No, you have to understand, you see. I'm not scared of my death. I'm actually just scared of my own unfaithfulness. True love, which exists from within, cannot be felt with the force of the steel of the sword, because there is nothing harder than steel, you see. But it is still nothing compared to true feelings by the conference of the Oh, wow. <laughs> ah. Greetings to the great Sheikh Atar Neshaburi. This is Jalal Adin. He is my son. Jalal Adin, greetings to you, young man. Mm. So, I have a question for you. Could you please tell me what exactly was the last thing that you were witness to? Well, you see, before I came to see you, I went to pick some walnuts and left my shoes and dolmen under a tree and decided to climb the tree. I was happy and unaware. I started picking walnuts and someone came along and stole my shoes and dolmen. So I left without shoes and a dolmen, with regret in my heart and a few walnuts in my hand. Well, what else? What else? Tell me. And I thought about how mankind wastes his life with unimportant things, just like a child who climbs up a tree to pick walnuts and loses his shoes and dolmen. And when he comes to his senses, just like a child who has been robbed, he starts to cry out in vain for life he has lost. Well, of course you and my father aren't like those children to leave their shoes and dolmen under a tree and waste their life in ignorance. The things that you are saying, are they your own words? Or did you learn them at school? I didn't go to school, oh Sheikh. But I really want to, and this is exactly the reason why I want to go to Baghdad. My tutor, Saeed Borhan Eddin Tarmazi, taught me many things back home. Father has made me a promise. After we get to Baghdad, I will be sent to a school. I want to become a Sultan of Scholars, just like my father. So tell me, which one of your readings do you think have influenced you the most so far? Sanayi's The Walled Garden of Truth is my favorite. This, right here, is the Book of Secrets. It's for you. This is a book that the Sheikh wrote himself, Jalal Adin. Thank you very much. <laughs> I know that your great father will look after you until you grow up to be a man and become tall like a tree. But I want you to take good care of yourself too. Don't just blindly climb every single tree you see along the way so you don't just give away the gem of life for a few walnuts. Now go. How long are you going to be in Nishabu? I'm not sure, but I heard the leader of the caravan speak of dawn. Before you leave, be sure to visit Khayyam's mausoleum. Oh, Sheikh. What do you think of my Jalal Adin? Take him seriously. I believe. I believe this boy will soon start to set fire to the hearts in love and will create excitement and wonder in those searching for the truth.
there are pains in this world that our companions suffer, pains for which there is no cure. The cure isn't sleeping, it isn't traveling, and it isn't eating. It is only seeing friends that can cure them. If a non-believer sits among believers, he will be influenced by them and turn into a believer. And at that moment, it becomes a gathering of believers. When this works with a non-believer, imagine the good it would do to believers. Sorry for bothering you. I have a favor to ask. Do you know that it's the middle of the night, Kaka? Please forgive me. I haven't been able to sleep for a second tonight. I have a favor to ask, and please don't ask the reason for it. A favor without reason in the middle of the night? Tell me, what's happened, brother? Would you please get up and spend the rest of the night in my room? I will sleep in your room. I have this strange feeling inside ever since this evening. If you don't spend the night in this room, I will feel much better. I'm awake. Wake up, son. Brother Kaka has seen a bad dream for me. You go ahead. I'll come too. Nothing, boy. Just get up and go to that room with your father. Well, now that you've made me lose sleep, you can at least tell me a story. But this time, have some excitement in it. <sighs> hmm. Oh, I want to tell you the story of this wound. It's a short story. Remember the thief I told you about? The thief in the desert, remember? That was me. And the man who saved my life that day was Bahavalad. And this scar that I have here on my arm is the night watchman's doing. The wound that connected my life to Baha Eddin Valad's life. And I swore to myself that to make up for the chivalry, that your father showed me. I would serve him and his family for the rest of the days of my life. Of course, you still weren't born back then. Only two years after that you were born. You always wanted to know the story behind this skull. So there you have it right now. Now you know, Jalal Eddin. Before tonight, I was the only one who knew this secret, along with a great sultan of scholars. <laughs> now get up and go to your father's side and, and sleep, Jalaluddin.
Escape towards Bulk's direction. We've sent some of our men after him. He's wounded one of them. Oh, 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 oh. I don't know what kind of hatred this is that had to lead to his death. Oh, oh, oh. That's why he insisted in the middle of the night to change rooms. And he went to sleep in the room that I was supposed to be sleeping in. He was a loyal man, a kind man, and he lost his life because of the vow he had made. This is what it means to take refuge in what God has planned for us. Be content. We must be content with the will of God. May God shower his blessings upon him. And may he be blessed with a place in heaven. Amen. Come on, son. Get up. Get up. have to lose the people that I love so soon in life. Look, my son, the more God loves you, the more difficulties he puts you through to make you become a stronger man. It's a sign of being close to him. Haven't you heard the story about the two lovers, Lely and Majnun, and the bowls? Of all the bowls she had, she always broke only Majnun's. Her intention with this was to test how strong Majnoon's love was for her. And each time he came back with a broken heart. But each time he also came back with a newer bowl. Your heart is like your bowl, Jalaluddin. Every time it breaks, it also becomes newer. It means God loves you. And with the amount of pain that your small body has endured in your small time on earth, you will be granted a very, very sweet gift. You will realize what that means soon enough, Shalalati. The mind is like a butterfly, and the beloved is like a candle. A butterfly is prepared to burn with the flame of the fire and die. And a real butterfly is one which doesn't turn away from the candle, even with all the pain, and burn.
are grateful for the news that you've brought. You can go home and rest now. They will take good care of you. Listen very carefully to what I'm going to tell you now, and remember it. the news that you have brought us. <laughs> Even though, I wish he was still alive and I could scream at him and threaten him to stay silent. But Hafiz, the story of Bahadin being dead must be accompanied by some kind of proof, or at least a witness. Ah, and it was with this hand that you struck him, right? No, sir. With this hand. I always kill with my left hand. If your intention is to take away the two bags of the coins that you owe me in favor of the treasury of the Muslims, I will overlook it straight away. The way that Sheikh Kamal Eddin has always worked as he only accepts things that are proven. There have been many things that have been said and heard that seem real but turns out to me untrue. Huh. It's obvious you have killed. Take it. Until we see how things... how things turn out. Gains, you will fall into difficulties. One who's in love goes through many difficulties for his gains. These words were written by Atar. Recite me something from Atar. 
Oh God, your blessing is the sea of knowledge. Only a drop of your blessing is enough for us. In your path, those who lost their lives became great in the realm of love. Please light my heart with your greatness, O oh God, and make my heart able and satisfied. The yearning of reaching you is burning everyone. Don't burn everyone because of my separation from self. You are reciting it from heart. I don't know a tariff by heart. Should I recite, Sanayi? Go ahead. You do not need to eat and sleep. You are free of doubts and similarities. You are free of faces and colors. You are free of flaws and faults. I can't describe you in any way because you cannot be comprehended. I can't speak of your likeness because you can't be comprehended in the mind. We have two messengers here from Rokh and Adin, from Aksikat and Halabad. The Mongols have destroyed more than seven cities and 30 towns from the Chaganian to the Khobadil. After Bukhara and Samarkand, it will be Aksikat and Halavad which will burn in the flames of the Tatars. It seems it's their tradition. Whichever city they attack, they make the youth do hard labor. They make them dig trenches and carry wood and stones around. The ones that are left, they simply behead and raise what's left of their houses. It's quite astonishing to me that they haven't turned to Khorasm yet. But what's even more astonishing to me is that Sultan Muhammad hasn't even sent any soldiers over there to stop the enemy. The number of Khorasm soldiers are more. It doesn't make sense to me. It is because there is infighting, Zakar Zakaria, between mother and son. It really does astonish me the way that those who are in power can just simply Stop caring about the people. Well, you know, the people are just like stairs when it comes to kings and sultans, sir. Of course, you are an exception to this accusation. You were being sarcastic, but the truth is I am not an exception, Sheikh Kamal Eddin. I know myself. But even I have no idea of how it happens and which door it enters from. Does the writing say how many of Cengiz's soldiers are coming toward the city? Does it say? It says Genghis divided his army into four divisions before he reached Otra. Three divisions each have 70,000 men. They've been sent to Otra, Jand, and Kojand. And the greater part of the army is waiting to march towards Khorazim. This is someone else's story. It's nothing to do with us. What should concern us the most is that the Mongols have now reached all the way to Aksikat and Halavad. So in three or four more days, they would have reached Talmaz. And Talmaz is not too far away from Balkh. So what now, sir? What do we have to do? What we're sure about from the things that we've seen and heard is that there is no victory when it comes to the Mongols. So if I understand correctly from what you're telling me is that we should just leave the city to the Mongols and run away somewhere. I'm sorry, but from what I've heard, they only use the young for labor. Either way, surrendering to these people should not even be an option, in my opinion. In some of the cities, it's been said that there was no resistance. They even went to greet them with gifts, and still none of them were spared from Genghis's sword. But for me, it's about confrontation. Outside of Balkh, on the way to the entrance of the city, not more than six kilometers away, there are two stone columns with valleys in between. I suppose you've seen them? There's a bridge going over them as well. We will soak the bridge with all the flammables we can find and wait on the other side in secret. And when the Mongol army appears and steps on the bridge, we will set it all on fire and send them straight to hell. I'm afraid we will need weeks and weeks to plan and execute this plan, sir. 
We don't have any time left, sir. We should escape and try to save our own lives. That's not true. Never in my life will I surrender the city to the Mongols. <laughs> They have a companion on the inside who will open the door for them. This is the order to transfer the treasury of Balk to the one in Georgionye. Immediately! You can say a thousand things from the outside. It will be useless unless someone on the inside believes you. Just like a tree which has no water at the root. Even a thousand floods will not make it bear fruit. The only way that it will bear fruit is when it is watered at the root. <laughs> <laughs> 